Hey guys, it's Ann. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, this channel is mostly about vermiculture, worm farming, and the like. My primary focus is generally on trying new things, new types of bins, new types of worms, and also debunking food myths. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to look in on the Eat My Jeans project. And I think it's been almost a month since we've looked in on this. And as you can tell, it is very wet. I should have got down here and taken off that plastic before now. But honestly, the wetter it is, the more the worms like it. So they're not upset about it, but you know, it just means to me that I'm not going to be able to harvest this anytime soon. So let's take a look in on this and see what is going on. Wow, it is super muddy. But as you can see here, the cocoons are definitely um, all over the place. Got cocoons here and also there. We have cocoons everywhere. So we've got some really good castings in here, plus it's super wet. So let's take a look and see what the blue jeans have been doing in the month that we've been gone. I'll put a picture below of what we fed the bin in addition to the blue jeans. I'll put that below. If you have any questions about my projects, about eating my old clothes, etc., put those in the comments as well. But what we've been doing is we've just been taking the blue jeans and rolling them up with food in between the layers. And I don't know what this is, maybe a melon or something. So we're just going to kind of unfurl them here and see what we've got. They're making awesome progress on these. Uh, the blue jeans didn't have holes except for in a few places when we first put these in. Uh, I don't remember how many days ago it is, but I'll put that below as well. And now they're totally through these jeans. And I imagine it has quite a bit to do with the amount of moisture in here because the moisture is very, very high. Um, much higher than I would ever intentionally do. But now that we've got 55% humidity in the basement, um, it doesn't matter if I put water in here or not. Worm castings do tend to absorb moisture. So I'm just going to go set that on the plastic over there and then we can look in and see what the rest of the bin is doing other than the blue jeans. So this looks really, really well worked over. Lots of, lots of moisture. So we're definitely going to be leaving the lid off of this this, this time. Because clearly, if I'm ever going to harvest this bin, this is going to have to dry out. So I can feel that there is some coconut coir in here. And uh, the paper bedding. But you can tell it is super, super wet. Now, according to the research that I've read, worms actually love it all the way up to like 80, 85 percent humidity or percent moisture in the bin. So I'm willing to bet this is definitely in the 90 percent range. So they are probably loving it, even though it to me is a bit repulsive and not easy to work with. But we've got our grape stems here that are continuing to work, as well as all of the the food that's fallen out. We've looked at the blue jeans and I think they're doing really well, but I think we're going to need to put the blue jeans in here and then pile some food on them and uh, so the worms and the other bin critters can continue on. One thing I did want to mention is that a lot of people freak out if there's other bugs in their worm bins and I'm going to admit I was one of those people as well. But the truth is that the worms need these other creatures to help pre-process some of the uh, items that we feed them. And if we want to keep things out of the landfill, we're going to have to accept these other creatures like mites and springtails and roly-polies and, and the things like that as part of the worm bin ecosystem so that we can keep things out of the landfill. So I'm going to put the blue jeans back, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to stretch them out and make piles this is pretty pretty far gone really so maybe we'll just kind of make one layer of the blue jeans and feed on top of it and I think I'm gonna leave this over here to, to dry out and then maybe we'll get them some dry bedding um, to mix in here so that uh, 
the moisture can start, you know, getting a little better for me. All right, let's get them some food. Now, if you saw my other post, you know that I cleaned out my gnat traps. So I'm going to be feeding the paper towel that was in the gnat trap to the worms. And then they're going to get some kitchen scraps here, which that's nope. I don't know why that's in there. Um, I use those for chip clips. They work a lot better than any of the plastic things that you buy. Um, so I'm not sure why that made it into the, the compost bag. But I'm going to cover that over. I'm going to put some of this old bedding on top of here just to make sure that the worms and the critters and everything have a uh, good contact with the new food. And then I'm going to grab some bedding for over here we can mix in to hopefully get that moisture a little uh, drier. Okay, so I've got some shredded cardboard here. It is part of my prepared bedding. It's just the stuff that was on top that was a little drier than usual. And uh, if you want to see the video of how I make the prepared bedding so that the worms can eat it really fast, uh, I will link that at the end of the video. Also, my experiments do have their own playlists, so you can watch the various little projects that I have with me and my worms in our adventures to figure out what else they can eat. If you're liking this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to see the other projects related to this, I will link them here and here. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody have a good day.